FNN。Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight, or internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted a chart up here. It's hourly uh, hourly chart of the gold. Uh, as you notice here, we had this Gartley drawn in here at the 61% retracement there at 208. Now the difference is it went up to the 78% level. But if you would go over to the left over here, you'll see this was a head and shoulders pattern. There's your left shoulder, your head, your right shoulder coming in right there at your 78% level. And from there, it dropped $30, folks. Uh, this is, tells us that we still are heading lower in the gold market. Uh, double check the Trade What You See newsletter. You'll see that there's a very, very important ABCD down there at the level of, uh, of uh, uh, 1947, 1948. Today's big move in silver, we hit $26, and then we broke a dollar an ounce today uh, in silver, which also tells us that we're moving down and if you also follow the platinum market, uh, the platinum also had a uh, pretty big uh, break uh, on Friday, and it is continuing. I'll bring this up so you can take a uh, quick look at it because uh, the, these are just corrections, folks, uh, in a bull market. This is a top, but how much of a top we're going to get, I don't know. But uh, those are just ABCD. You see it went right up to the 78% level of the high we made uh, last January. So it tells us just a correction. That's all it is. And it's over, very overbought because it's been up like eight, eight weeks, I believe. Uh, no, 10 weeks in the platinum. So it's had a huge run uh, in that direction. So very, very important to uh, pay a close attention to that. Now, I wanted to uh, do one other thing here that I think is uh, relatively important because this is the one – that everybody is talking about and I want to get this to your attention the best I can so let's hold on here for a second this is the e-mini S&P futures okay and this is what we're going to be looking at here you'll notice that we had these days of course we had this move here this is where we backed off to the exact 382 that was there on the 26th now we have taken all this out now folks we have exceeded these levels here we did get above that 205 level High was 206 and change, so we took that out. So that's going to be important. That this market explodes to the upside and keeps going because if it doesn't, and if it doesn't, that is nothing more than a false breakout, much like what you had right here. It looked like it was going to go up forever, and well, forever happened to be the next day, and then down she came. So, and we've got some pretty strong cycle stuff uh, coming up, along with the fundamentals. We got the Fed coming in on Wednesday and the non-farm payroll coming in on Friday. So all of those will be uh, really important. And back to the charts, I wanted to bring a uh, one up that everybody keeps uh, asking about. Hold on one second. It doesn't start with that. It starts with this one right here. I wanted to show you copper because, you know, Dr. Copper usually gives you a pretty good idea of what's happening in the market here. And as you can see during this last run up, uh, copper did not follow through. You see, it's been going down. We had a little two-day bounce, uh, and that didn't last very long. So that's all this is telling you now, that this market, because we do have a 135 pattern here, could be heading to the downside. There's two other things that you have to pay really close attention to if you're following the stock market. Because, you know, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. But the one that is the most bearish, and I want to get this up here, and show it to you. This is the Dow Jones Transportation. Now, one of my favorite books happens to be Reminiscences of a Stock Operator by Edwin Lefevre. And he always says in that book, sell the weakest and sell the weakest and buy the strongest. And the Russell, as you can see here with this 135 pattern, right at the 382 has been the weakest. We hit it one, two, three times. That's where we went short the third time. And even during this monster rally that we had in the Dow Jones up 600 points and the S&P up 100 handles from the bottom, 
all this could do was make a 382 ABCD pattern, and the high uh, matched it at uh, 1785, and we sold it at uh, 20, uh, 18, uh, 18, I think 1850, 1820. 1815, and so that was telling you that the market is much, much weaker. Now, there's another chart in here that was really surprising to me when I did it over the weekend because I didn't think that it was, uh, you know, as bad as that. But that is the Dow Jones transportation, and we're going to have Stan Harley on Wednesday. He follows this very, very closely. He'll give us a pretty good idea of what we're looking at. But look at the transportation, folks. Now, this is a, uh, as you can see here, it's a really interesting chart. You know, going back uh, for quite a while, but you'll notice here uh, it's a daily chart. You can see the A B C D coming down right to the spot where it was supposed to be. Then it has an A B C D up. Then it has this big break, just like we did here, coming in on the 26th. You see, we almost make a new low, and this is all we can do is a little two-day rally. Why wasn't this thing making new highs when the rest of it was? That's not a sign, folks, here. This is how goods are moved. You know, airplanes moving people, uh, supplies, all that stuff. So that's not a good sign. This thing should be way up there. So there's two indices that are a little trouble. That doesn't mean they can't catch up, and they could, but it's the Russell and also the Dow Jones Transportation that are leading. Uh, if you remember back in the days of the uh, – the Dow theory with Richard Russell, you know, they had to all be going together, the utilities, the Dow Jones, and the transportations in order to keep the market going. But, you know, things have changed so much because of the ETFs and stuff, you can't use that anymore. It just, uh, it's just uh, it's become antiquated. I imagine somebody can still use it. I happen to not be one of them. So uh, that's pretty much what we're paying close attention to. But uh, those numbers that we're looking at are, are important. And whether they break through to the upside or don't break through to the upside is what's really uh, what's really important over a period of time. Uh, going back to the futures market, folks, uh, there's a big one that's going on right now. I just want to get this up here, folks. When I look at this chart, I have to tell you that anybody that listens to fundamentals, they ought to go back and rethink what they're thinking about. Because look at this, folks. This is when it was going limit up, Okay. We, we're, we, we've dropped in half, folks. Look at this. We're, we, today we hit 614. Uh, and the ABCD on this is 601. I mean, I mean, this has dropped in half from 13 and change down to 614 uh, a bushel. Something's not right. I mean, now they're telling us that you know, there's the wheat's going to go to zero. Well, not that bad. But, I mean, look at this. This thing is below on the long-term weekly chart. And I do believe I, I can bring that up to you because I thought – that it would be a buy today at 1620, excuse me, 620. So I said, yep. I said, if you've been waiting for this, you want to be a buyer of the wheat at, uh, I think it was 622. Fortunately, you've got to use a stop of about 15 cents. And we'll get it up here to take a quick look at it. And you can definitely say that without a doubt, this is what we call an oversold market. So that's what we're looking at. So I believe the number on the daily was 1620 uh, in the July wheat is the one we were buying. Uh, this happens to be the May wheat, but the July was at uh, 1620. The last I saw was 618 and three quarters, but uh, we'll see what's going on here. If you have any questions, 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year d-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the ABCD chart that I put in here when the market was up there at 4205, just to make a, bring a point, because this is what I was doing when I was in Los Angeles, Las Vegas. I kept it as simple as possible. We were looking at uh, 15, 20-minute charts, and we had some, uh, you know, ones that didn't work but the believe me folks there were some believers out there that said why haven't i seen this before i said well you have this it's not been explained the way that it should be and most people try to do it with elliott wave which i have a little difficulty with but uh, only because i'm looking at one thing a b equals cd and as you can see the abcd here happens to be perfect up there at 4205 the high was 4206 but look at the number of bars this was just a 13 minute uh, chart and uh, 13 bars and so look at this you had uh, eight uh, seven bars up and seven bars up exactly that's a perfect ABCD now th those don't happen perfectly only about 40 percent of the time the other uh, 60 percent of the time it just keeps going straight up or it doesn't make the ABCD but it could be a 1.27 a 1.618 expansion a lot of different things but when you've got them that line up just like this you know that that's your moment of truth of where you want to be when the market gets ready to possibly turn now if this would have gone up to 4210 it was certainly been a failure and you would have lost but right now you would have picked up a quick 10 points uh, on it, and I don't know whether it's going to where it's going to go from here. But that's all I was trying to do was to show them these fractals, and that's nothing more than the fractals that Benoit Mandelbrot talked about. He's the father of fractals. Uh, you know, Gartley did it too. He didn't know it was a fractal, but he knew the lightning bolt, also known as guess what, boys and girls, A B equals C D, and that's the one for me. I, uh, I keep it as simple as possible, maybe a little bit too simple, but, you know, uh, complexity is trumped by simplicity, and simplicity is the key thing that you want to be uh, worried about uh, in these markets because uh, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat, 
And our way is to watch ABCDs, and when they fail, we move on to something else. Here is uh, one in silver. I wanted to bring this to your attention because we went sharply higher here uh, in silver. Now, this is several days old, several days old, and the reason why we were bringing this up is because you'll notice here uh, this was the time uh, where we were uh, looking uh, to be a buyer. Uh, there was the, I believe, where was it? We were right about... Uh, we were looking for the market to come down to this level, which it did, but it didn't do it until that uh, Thursday. And, of course, then it gave us these moves up here, and that took us to above. Uh, we hit 26.10 today in the silver, and then it uh, backed off you know, considerably. So I was trying to show different things of different things. They were uh, of different commodities, stocks, ETFs. And in you know, a period of two and a half hours, uh, they would have kept me there another two and a half hours if they hadn't run us out of the room. It would have been uh, would have been interesting to look at. But the one that I spent most time on was this chart of Microsoft. It brought Softy up because they were all talking about uh, you know this uh, uh, this AI artificial intelligence stuff and whether I do it in the writings. And I said I. Don't even know how to spell it a little bit, but these were the ABCDs. You can see the first one, perfect A, B, C, D, and we also, I, I made them count the time between the A and the B leg to see that it was exactly equal in the A and there's a C, D leg, and they, 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 they had not seen this before. And then this one comes down like this, and I brought a little bit of Fibonacci in at that point and said when we get up here to this price level of around 304, that this is probably going to be it. Well, it hit 309, and I my trade was going to be, I said, you know, sell it around that 304 or better, and or better today, you would have been filled at 90, excuse me, 30, 306 with a stop at 310. And so that's what I'd be looking at. And your price objective, all I did on the price objective was measure what this swing did, and I just moved it over to here, and that gave you a four to one risk reward ratio. That's when I brought in the picture of the old slot machine that I always talk about. You know, that when on the slot machine, it says right on the front of it, you have no chance of beating me long term. And I've taken in $1.2 million more than I've given out. Well, when you're trading, you're the slot machine. You get to determine when you want to play and when you want to turn the machine off because you have to determine how much you're going to risk. And that's what it's all about. It's how much money you risk. Not how much money you make. There's nothing you can do. But there could be another announcement on uh, artificial intelligence. And this can think it open twenty dollars higher tomorrow, and you could be a loser. But there's control that you don't have any control over. That's why the stop is in there. But even with that, you'll have p times where you will get whacked because of an announcement that it just comes right out of the blue. COVID, something like that. SARS, something like that. Uh, you know. Uh, a piece in Ukraine, anything could happen to make some of these things do that. But if you look at this Microsoft chart, folks, this is the only gap. This is one of the bigger stocks in the Dow. Look at this thing. This doggone thing is just way up here and left a huge gap. That's when the earnings came out. And that is had to have a gap to get it up there. But there's a lot of people buying up in here. Now, if this market rolls over, and if this market rolls over, then that's when you want to be really interesting in selling it short because all the people that bought it over the last four or five days, not going to be happy. Just like, uh, you know, some of these people that uh, stayed in those banking stocks for a long time. But uh, remember, folks, it's I'm going to say it one more time because it's uh, what you live by. It's not how much money you make, folks. It's how much money you don't lose because you're going to win if you eventually you're going to eventually find some good ones. There's no question about it. But if you lose all your money before that time, you don't get to play the game too often. So let's uh, remind ourselves of that. Okay, uh, Mike Moore is going to be coming back for another segment when we get back from this. But I wanted to bring uh, one other one that is getting ready for a pretty good sale. Hold on one second if I can get it up here, and that is the British pound. And I want to. Hold on. We'll get this right up here. This is a long-term weekly. But, uh, you know, we've had this tremendous rally here. 
And uh, boy, they, you talk about medical problems over there. My guys, the nurses are on strike. The, the ambulance drivers are on strike. I mean, even if you die over there, they're not going to pick you up. I mean, they're really serious about that kind of stuff. At least here, they'll pick you up and um, take you where you're supposed to be. I, at least I hope that's where they're going to go. But if we can get up here to this 127 level, we're at 125 right now. That's going to be a really interesting one to do because uh, we didn't stop very much at the 50%. We backed off a little bit, couldn't make a 382 retracement here on this uh, low from that one. And so we want to be watching this one really closely. But right now, the dollar has bottomed, the euro has topped, and we're going to find out what it's going to have on the downside. And that's where the pedal meets the metal. And we're going to find out how we do it. Here's one that we've been waiting for, acting really beautiful. We, we've we been talking about it from the bullish side. And today it uh, is also strong moving up with the risk on stuff. You'll see that uh, we're probably heading up to that 139 level, at least 138, 139 in the dollar yen. And uh, that's pretty good. Hey, let's take a break. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Mike Moore of More Analytics. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got Mike Moore of Moore Analytics on the line. Mike, would you please continue? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Larry. Thanks for having okay, me. Okay, let's again. take the uh, let's do the uh, S and P, and then if you get a chance, um, we'll do the bonds, and then we also want to do gold too. And okay. I'll be back in about 30 seconds. I've got to do something with data because I've lost data and I've got to get it back. So please continue and I'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay. So looking at the S&P here, uh, just as a backup, we held exhaustion above at 41.98 and a quarter. We rolled over 129.5. That was holding this exhaustion right here and rolling all the way over down here. Now we had a target a little bit lower uh, at... 40.61.75, and we came just shy of that with the 40.68.75 low. Since we've taken out this high and we did not make that target, that suggests that this run up here is a last leg in the move up from uh, 38.39 and a quarter. And so I said this morning that I would be aware of key exhaustion areas above at 42.05.75 to 33 and a quarter and 42.78 and a quarter to 42.90.75 and higher. And you can see we are currently holding this lower one right here. I'll blow this up a little bit for you. You can see we held this at 42.06 uh, with a 42.06 and a quarter high. We're starting to roll over. So we settle back down below this high, 41.98 and a quarter, that could start us into a bearish uh, correction in earnest. And that would be, if, if, if one of these exhaustion levels holds, the bearish correction should exceed 136.75 points. Now, I've broken this exhaustion level up into two levels. It's basically from 42.06, I said, to 42.33 and a quarter, and then the next area is up, up in here. Anyway, so that, if we do hold this, we start rolling over, we could see that level of a correction. All right, let's take a look at the gold. Gold has been chopping around pretty hard lately, just in this chop zone. And most recently, we broke them below a line that came through here, which had taken off the chart. We only saw some pressure here. We pulled up to it here, pressure again, and then we popped back above it, and then we rolled back over. So now we're in between two key lines, one down below and one up above, which I would probably redraw right now just like this. Um, like that, but this is going to come over here. So that upper one comes in at... Uh, 2016.80 this morning, minus 0.3 of a tick per hour, starting at, um, that was 8 o'clock this morning. It's a little bit lower right now. I'll tell you where it is. Those two lines come in right now at around 2015.10 uh, 20, to 2016.50. And a decent break above there would probably project this upward at least $25 uh, to the upside. And if we break below this lower line decently, that would project this downward at least $25 to the downside. So we're really just in this zone and uh, looking to break out of it uh, on some level. I do think that overall, uh, we held exhaustion here, rolled over. We may hold one of these, uh, these corrective exhaustion levels down here, but I still think we do have one more uh, significant push to the upside. And that is also demonstrated by well, let me just show you the weekly charts. Uh, so on these weekly charts, I do think we have a push back up through these highs here, and we have not seen that yet. And those highs are 2089.20, et cetera. And then we may hit one of these exhaustion levels up there. But in the meantime, we might see a short-term correction before resuming another higher trade. Okay, and then we'll take a quick look at the Bitcoin. The Bitcoin, we held exhaustion up here. Let me pull this over for you. All right, we were in a lower time frame bearish correction against the move up from uh, 19,520. I said the minimum target from 31,200 was 28,535, which we took out. 
And then we held exhaustion down here below in this uh, zone and bounced. That was the 27.265 to 26.735 area. We held that with the 26.980 low and bounced 3,070. And so now we're in between two different formations. So I said decent trade above 29.654 minus five per hour. Uh, we'll project this upward 1,200 minimum, 2,500 plus maximum, and decent trade below 27.335. Uh, plus one per hour starting at 6 a.m. We'll project this downward 2,225 minimum, 4,200 plus maximum. So, and this is also a fairly sizable uh, bearish formation. So this really could just push this down for a number of days. Likewise, if we were to take that formation out decently on the downside and back up through it decently, I'd be out of all shorts, I'd be long, and then looking for a run possibly to take out the highs and uh, keep on going. Not that it would be projected up there, but the likelihood is much greater. If we take out this smaller formation here, that's would have the, the uh, projections that I just, just talked about. Okay. Larry, does anybody have any questions? Believer in blockchains and Bitcoin, or do you have an opinion? Don't have a strong opinion. That's just like mine. I have no idea what they're talking about on that stuff. But <laughs> go all right. Oh, by the way, I want to mention, folks, if you're looking for a great commodity broker, Mike and I use the same broker out of Chicago. And if you have an interest, uh, you know, contact uh, Mike and he'll give him the name. But uh, he's uh, Bill is as good as it gets. And he's been around a long time and he certainly helps Mike a lot. So uh, he's, he's a great person to work with. Please continue, Bill. I mean, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, though, I do, regardless of whether I'm a believer in Bitcoin futures or whatever or not, I do think that uh, the move toward a general currency worldwide is likely. Yeah. Uh, just the, the, the way that everything's going. Uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, it talks specifically about that in the Bible, which was written 2000 plus years ago or whatever it actually speaks specifically to that which is kind of interesting that we're just whether or not you want to believe in that or not it's interesting that we're actually seeing that technology come to play right as we speak hmm. um anyway so do you have any questions on the uh, gold or the s p or bitcoin or no i got a question about the thing in the bible i you know i'm a i'm a bible person Where, what part of the bible is that in well it does say in revelation that in the end, uh, if you do not receive this mark, that you will not be able to buy or sell. Oh, you mean the, the triple six, right? And how how okay. could how could one person be in control of whether or not other people are able to buy or sell unless they were in control of a one world currency? That makes sense. Yeah, I think it'd be a good way of washing all the drug money because they're not going to be able to spend it if it's worthless. That's for sure. <laughs> well, that, that's the way they're going to sell it to us. Yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds like the right idea. Hey, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with Mike Moore and more analytics. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, with Mike Moore, more analytics. Uh, Mike, we've had a request. Uh, if you would go over the crude oil complex again, like we did on the first uh, segment, because we're at such a critical level here and we're having such great volatility, if you could uh, run over crude oil, gasoline, and the heating oil again, please. Okay. This and also, we want to chat just a little bit about your program for auto trading. I think that's important, too. So let's do the, uh, the crude oil complex first. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so again, on 327, we left a, um, excuse me, let me back up, trade below 80.88 as brought in 695 of pressure, and then the moderate bearish reversal above is also brought in 575 of pressure from 7405. Um, we also held exhaustion within that with a 7907 high and rolled over 514. Now, I said I'd be aware of possible exhaustion to contend with on the way down at 73.97 to 3.12. By the way, just for those of you viewing, you can have two different types of exhaustion. You can have extension exhaustion and you can have corrective exhaustion. And these are the two different exhaustions that I'm usually alternating in between. I do believe that since we left that significant moderate bearish reversal above, I think that that could bring in continued further trade lower. But within that, on lower time frames, you have the structure downward, mm -hmm. which may complete somewhere down in here, see a correction up in here before rolling over. Does okay. that make sense? Yes, yeah, it sure does. Okay. And looking at the cracks down in here, the cracks are what help you identify which of these markets you should be short, okay? So, for instance, in the heating oil crack, I said that the trade below 38.59 projected this downward 110 minimum, 365 plus maximum. We've attained 1,592 ticks of that so far. So um, just for anybody following that, that means basically being short. The, well, you wouldn't have been short the heat the whole time, but even in just this part down in here, you would have made 12 grand more per lot being short the heat than you would have the crude oil. So that's why... To fluff, to fluff over these spreads would be a gigantic mistake if you're trading the energies because they, they, they put out such a wealth of knowledge of how to make far more money trading the energies with your risk relatively being the same. And the 
unleaded gas here too. Said our 418, we left a moderate bearish reversal above that warranted pressure for days. We've seen 374 ticks. And for those of you that don't understand the 374 ticks in a crack, 374 ticks is the financial equivalent of 374 ticks in crude oil or $3.74. So it would be um, yeah, $3,740 per contract. And that's still projected to the downside. So you look at both of these cracks to decide um, what what is weakest relative to the crude. So here you know that the heat is weak relative to the crude because that's the front part of the contract. You know that RBOB is weak relative, RBOB being another word for unleaded gasoline, is weak relative to the crude also. And then you go back above and you look at the spread between the RBOB and the heat to see which of those is the weakest. And lately, uh, RBOB has been stronger than the heat. So that means if you line all these up, the heat should be the weakest, the RBOB would be in the middle, and the crude would be the strongest relative to the other products. Mm -hmm. That's not direction. That's not directional. Okay. Um, and just oh, this is second one here. Right. So anyway, you want to go to? Did you want to look in, into the RBOB itself and see? Yes, I would because I'm 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 not familiar with the gasoline contract as much as I am heating oil and the crude. And from my, I would like to hear your input on that if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. So the gasoline we held exhaustion at two eighty two eighty six high and rolled over thirty five point five four cents so far into a medium time frame bearish correction or trend against the move up from. 232. And if any of you really want to understand what that means financially, um, you can just take that and go 35, 54 times 0.42, and that'll give you the amount of crude ticks that that move goes to the downside. So we've seen $14,920 of a move from here down. Does that make sense? Yeah, because the, sure the gasoline is. is is priced per gallon, whereas the crude oil is priced per barrel, and there's 42 gallons per barrel. So you mm -hmm. just take whatever that figure is and times it by 0.42. Right now, we're popping up above this formation right here, which suggests we'll probably see some strength. Um, and likewise, a failure back down below that would warrant a renewed pressure probably to take out these lows and seek out some of these exhaustion levels down below. Um, and the heating oil, uh, that was the one I, I said was really leading the downside, really seeing a lot of pressure in here. And now we've been holding under this really key area right in here that I talked a little bit about earlier. That comes in here at 238.20 to 239.88. And we have not been able to get above there yet. This got up to 239.43 yesterday. Looks like we're trying to push up against it again today. But if we got back above there and settled above there, <clears throat> that would warrant us some decent short covering probably for a couple of days. That would be a warning to me to be out of all my shorts for the time being. And then we would have to see where this corrects to to the upside. Okay. My assumption is it would probably be a bullish correction on a lower time frame basis that would probably then resume a new bearish structure. And if I'm wrong... And then it could mean that it's just a new bullish trend. But the way that you play that is you'd be out of your shorts, you'd be long, and then you'd be taking shots at any exhaustion levels on the way up, paying for the trade, and then reestablishing your position if you're off. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, or did I? Yeah, it makes that perfect before? sense. Yeah, it, it's once you once you you know to read it to me like that, I I can understand it. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I'd be I, I, I pay attention to is the crude oil uh, curve. So this is just the June the June D spread. This is a six month spread, and we had held exhaustion up here, which was one of the initial signs that that move was over. It didn't show that hand in the outright, but the June D did. If you go back over some of our past shows, Larry, you'll see that I called this area, and then we took up this form this formation here, saw pressure. And then down in here, held exhaustion. That was one of the first signs that the downside might be over. So now I think we're in this bullish correction against this move down before 
slash if mm -hmm. resuming lower trade again. And this is even more effective when you look at the DST spread. I'm just not looking at the DST spread because it's too far out at this point. You got any other questions? No, those those are those are just pretty much spot on. Listen, I want to thank you. Uh, if you if you have time on Friday, maybe you could uh, do a segment make, to see where we are because you've uh, you've really had some great calls here. We want to see how this unfolds for the rest of the week. So maybe if you're free on Friday, we could have you on for for a short segment. Thank you. Oh, one last thing is the uh, auto trade programs. We're collecting uh, interested parties on those. So if anybody's interested, just fill out a form and send it in. We appreciate it. Moreanalytics.com? Yep. Okay, we'll see you Friday. Thanks a lot for joining Thank us, you. my friend. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody else, for watching. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have a question from someone in Texas, Austin, Steve. Uh, we're going to uh, take a look at UNG for you. Um, we've only got a few minutes here, but we're certainly going to be able to do that in a few minutes, uh, God willing, and she usually is. Hold on here one second. We'll get this up here, and that's UNG. I know I've got it in here because uh, you have asked before, and also other people have, and I'm almost there, UNG, and there it is. I move down here to the daily. We had a pretty good correction here 
uh, oh, gee, this doesn't even look like it's trading compared to the natural gas that I'm looking at. Let's blow this up a little bit so we can see it. Yeah, we've just had a nice Gartley form, Steve. I'm going to draw it on here to show you because this is a, this is an ETF and it's only it's uh, six bucks. So it just completed a really nice Gartley. I'll bring this up so you can see it. And then what I'm going to do is tomorrow I'm going to make myself a note and make sure that I put up the regular natural gas contract because this ETF is um, it's a well you, it's, you can imagine here trading at six dollars and some it, it's just I don't like to do it uh, well let me try it again well let me see if I can put the chart up again they're saying the charts not coming through and we're gonna try it one more time get it up here and that'll see where we are here Maybe this it, but see, it's, it's only trading for six dollars and seventy nine cents, and so we'll do a big one on the regular natural gas. It had a big sell off today. We broke about twenty bucks, I believe, almost twenty dollars, down from two thirty seven down to two uh, twenty and change, I believe, and that uh, was the first big correction we've had in the last few days. But I'll do an update on that. I'm writing a note right now that when we get ready for this uh, on uh, tomorrow's show. The very first thing we're going to do for you, Steve, is we're going to cover the natural gas contract and try to relate it to the futures um, of what we look at and how it relates to UN, UNG. So I hope that helps. Anyway, listen, live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless and do something nice for your neighbors, folks, because there's a lot of people out there uh, that are having a whole lot of trouble. I saw more homeless people in Las Vegas than I've seen 